As a part of the Hornbill Festival, World War Peace Rally was held today at the World War II Museum Complex, Kisama, to commemorate the Battle of Kohima. A prize distribution ceremony was held after the Peace Rally with MLA and advisor ITNC, NRE Science and Technology, Monlu Mokikon, as the special guest. Of our reminds us of our uh, civilization that dawned on us, which we did not get it by free, of course, but we paid, we paid some price. So, sacrifices, heroic acts, things like that, and because of that, here what we are today. The World War II Peace Rally of Hornbill Festival is probably, probably the only event of its type in the country and the Nagaland Adventure and Motorsports Association in collaboration, in collaboration with State Tourism Department has been conducting the World War II Peace Rally during the Hornbill Festival to commemorate the Battle of Kohima and also to promote peace and unity. There's no heaven It's easy if you try commemorate this World War II, the Battle of Kohima, sorry, and uh, we still have all these lovely jeeps and uh, all the arms and ammunition left behind. I think uh, we don't, I would not say that, at least for me, I don't have a sense of nostalgia for all this uh, weaponry that is left behind. Uh, because I'm a student of history and I would like to, as I said in the beginning, review it a little bit for all of us. Number one, the Battle of Kohima was also called and known by others, especially historians, as the Siege of Kohima. But this was not the first Siege of Kohima. If you look at the 19th century, Kohima was under attack not by the Japanese nor by the British, but by the Nagas. So if you look at this road here, Later on, after the war, it was known as the Rod of Bones, because a lot of people died, and they were full of uh, the remains. And uh, this road was built after a long period. It was first surveyed in 1832, in, in the 19th century, by the Britishers, and the then Manipuri king called Gambir Singh. Gambir Singh is one of the most important Manipuri Maharaja was able to retake Manipur from the Burmese after, right before, I mean, right after the Treaty of Yandabu, which was signed, wherein the East India Company took over the entire northeastern region. And from 1832 to 1889, the British made several attempts to take control of the Naga Hills because they saw this as a shorter route from our home, uh, the Assam Valley, to Myanmar. And any, any student of history will know that that 19th century period where the British, with so much violence, after having terrorized, killed, and captured so many Naga warriors for His Majesty's pursuit of this region. If you look at the casualties from 1832 to 1890, and I marked that period because in 1890, for the first time, after more than 47 years of the British attempt to colonize the Nagas, they were successful in establishing a political headquarter in Kohima. The first political headquarter of the British was uh, established in Chumukidima, 
because the British were very poor at pronouncing our names, they call it Samugutin. Jamukitima was called Samugutin. And if you look at our, at our history, the first land compensation, because Naga is very fond of discussing land compensation for our development activities. First land compensation was paid to the Angami Gambura in Samugutin, Jamukitima, by the British political administrators. We have forgotten our 19th century history because it's not written about, or very few people want to go into the books, uh, history books, and read that part of our, that chapter of our history. Yes, Nagas were great headhunters. During that period, our Naga warriors went down to Silet Chittagong in Bangladesh, because those days there was no Bangladesh, till 1971. And we went there to do one trade in salt. Number two, uh, they were slave trade going on, so to capture slaves. So this was a continuous period. I would like to recall all this because, you know, this is, uh, the Nagas were not colonialists. We didn't go, we went, kept, uh, defeated the villages there, but we didn't go and establish our rule over there. We were happy with our village republics. So that is the 19th century history. So when the British came and established the headquarters in Kohima, they started interfering in the rule and control of our Naga villages. And hence, all these area, those days, it was called the Tenime area, they, they, for the first time in the history of Naga existence, they formed a confederacy of Naga villages. And they attacked what is now known as the DC, which was the small patch of land where they formed a political administrative headquarter. They did not take the permission of Koima villagers to form that headquarter. They came and established it themselves because it was a good place, it was in the middle, and from here they could control the route to Manipur and also Assam and the valley there. And for them, the issue was not about resource extraction in the Naga Hills. Issue was also not about revenue. It was control of the road. That was the main route, sorry, the main purpose of the British. But they wanted to tame them because that time, tea had been discovered in the <clears throat> uh, valley and they had brought in a lot of uh, capital to start tea plantation. And so, to check Naga raids, they started and established this political ad administrative headquarter. Why I'm going back to this period is because at that po point of time, the Naga Confederacy, led by Konuma villagers, attacked Kohima, and that was the first siege of Kohima. First siege of Kohima. In that battle, a lot of Nagas died, because we had, of course, some of our Nagas had purchased some muzzle-loading guns, some rifles, and all that, but uh, it was basic. We were no match to the mortars and cannons of the British, uh, that time, the British force. Now, if you look and review that part of our history, the first siege of Kohima, and compare it to the second siege of Kohima. First siege of Kohima happened after, I said, a lot of violence was inflicted on the Nagas. So many Naga warriors died, so many of our headhunters died, and only after a lot of blood has been shed, they were able to capture this land. First siege of Kohima is also in uh, the present day history seen as first anti-colonial uh, offensive by, by the Nagas against the British. And it is remembered uh, in, in, in uh, many historical work, work, work as one of the most important periods of Naga history. Motion squad, they are from Thailand. Most disciplined squad. Most disciplined squad goes to Jeep number nine. A cash award of rupees ten thousand. <laughs> the best uniform squad goes to Jeep number ten. <laughs> best weaponry squad goes to Jeep number eight. The best maintained jeep and that goes to 
Jeep number one. Destination from point A to point B. The last and the most important uh, prize for today, the World War II Peace Rally. This goes to Jeep number four. The winners of the World War II Peace Rally. Hornbill photo of the year. Huh?